Welcome back to Basic Electronics. In this lecture, we will continue with logical functions and see how they can be simplified. We will also look at two standard forms used to express logical functions, namely the sum of products form and the product of sums form. Finally, we will look at the don't care condition seen frequently in truth tables for logical functions. Okay, let us begin. Let us look at a few more useful theorems. Here is one, a plus ab equal to a. Now to prove this theorem, we can follow two approaches. A, as we have been doing, we can construct truth tables for the left hand side and the right hand side for all possible input combinations and show that they are the same. Approach B, we can use identities and theorems which we already know and then show that the left hand side and right hand side are the same. So let us follow this uh, second approach for this case. This is our left hand side a plus ab. We can write a as a dot 1. Then we can combine these two terms like that. What is 1 plus b? It is just 1 and then a dot 1 is a and that is the right hand side. That proves uh, this theorem. Here is another similar theorem a dot a plus b equal to a. Let us uh, start with the left hand side and uh, we can write this as a dot a plus a dot b. What is a dot a is a and that gives us a plus a b and we have already seen that a plus a b is the same as a so therefore we get a. In the last slide we have proved this theorem and also this theorem but we don't actually need to do that we can obtain this second theorem from the first theorem simply by using the principle of duality between or and and. Let us see how that can be done. Alright, let us look at the left hand side. This A and B by duality becomes A plus B or A or B and then this A plus this becomes A dot the dual of that which is A plus B and therefore our left hand side has now become A dot A plus B and the right hand side has only A and the dual of A is A since there are no operations involved and therefore we can obtain A dot A plus B equal to A that is this theorem. Similarly let us consider A plus A bar equal to 1 and let us see what is the dual of uh, this theorem. Knowing that plus and dot are dual of each other and 1 and 0 are also dual of each other. So what is the dual of the left hand side? We replace this uh, plus with dot there and get A dot A bar. What is the dual of the right hand side? Dual of 1 is 0 so therefore we get 0 here and therefore we can write A dot A bar equal to 0. So once we know this uh, theorem we can obtain this one simply by the principle of duality without proving it again. Okay, let us continue. Here is another theorem. A plus A bar B equal to A plus B. Let us prove this theorem. We can use the distributive law to write A plus A bar B as A plus A bar and A plus B. What is A plus A bar? It is 1. So it is 1 dot A plus B and that is simply A plus B. So that proves this theorem. There is a dual theorem this one and you should figure out how this follows from this original theorem. Another theorem AB plus AB bar equal to A. How do you prove this? AB plus AB bar is A dot B plus B bar 
again by distributive law and b plus b bar is 1 so that is a dot 1 which gives us a once again there is a corresponding dual theorem and uh, you should uh, check out that this follows from this one let us consider this uh, statement in an india australia match india will win if one or more of the following conditions are met and what are the conditions a tendulkar scores a century b tendulkar does not score a century and won fails shane won fails means he fails to get wickets c tendulkar does not score a century and shivak scores a century so these are the conditions and uh, clearly this statement is uh, fairly complex it's not very easy to comprehend and let us see if we can use our identities and theorems to simplify this statement let us define t a logical variable to stand for tendulkar scores a century and what does it mean that means this variable is one if tendulkar indeed scores a century otherwise it is zero similarly s stands for shivak scores a century w stands for one fails to get wickets and i stands for india wins and now we can rewrite this statement as i equal to t plus t bar w plus t bar s and why do we have this uh, or operations here that is because the statement says that india will win if one or more of the following conditions are met and that is exactly the meaning of this logical or operation and what are those three conditions one is tendulkar scores a century that is the same as this logical variable t second is tendulkar does not score a century and one fails so it is and of two things one is t bar and the other one is w and so on and we can now simplify this uh, expression let us write t as t plus t then we can combine this t and this t bar w this t and this t bar s like that this t plus t bar w we can write as t plus t bar dot t plus w similarly t plus t bar s is t plus t bar dot t plus s t plus t bar is 1 so that gives us t plus w again t plus t bar here is 1 that gives us t plus s so we get t plus w plus t plus s that is the same as t plus w plus s because this t plus t is the same as t so now we have a much simpler statement and that says india will win if one or more of the following conditions is true one tendulkar strikes that is tendulkar scores a century b won fails to get wickets and c shivak strikes that is shivak scores a century let us now discuss logical functions in standard forms take this as an example it's a function of three variables a b and c and we will call this function as x1 this function as x2 and so on so this x is the same as x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 and this form is called the sum of products form because it looks like a sum in reality of course these are the or operations so it's a sum of these terms and each term looks like a product in reality of course these are and operations here so this form is called the sum of products form sum corresponding to or and product corresponding to and we can construct the truth table for x in a systematic manner knowing that uh, we have this sum of products form how do we do that one enumerate all possible combinations of a b and c since each 
of a b c can take two values 0 or 1 we have two raised to three possibilities and we have seen that before second tabulate x1 which is a bar b c bar etc and how do we do that we know that x1 is 1 only if a bar is 1 b is 1 and c bar is 1 that is a is 0 b is 1 and c is 0 otherwise x1 is 0 so we can tabulate x1 x2 x3 x4 in this manner and finally since x is x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 we know that x is 1 if any of these four terms is 1 otherwise x is 0 and in that manner we can tabulate x let us take uh, an example and do this alright so let us now construct the truth table for this uh, function x which we saw in the last slide and step number one as we said is to enumerate all the possibilities all the different combinations of a b and c and let's just go through this once again because it's so important so we start with 0 0 0 and then we allow c to change every single entry so 0 to 1 1 to 0 and so on we allow b to change every two entries 0 0 then followed by 1 1 then 0 0 and then followed by 1 1 and we allow a to change every four entries so four zeros followed by four one and uh, if we had one more variable for example then that variable would change every eight entries and so on and that is uh, a way to exhaust all possible input combinations let us now look at x1 and x1 is the same as a bar b c bar and this term is 1 if a bar is 1 b is 1 and c bar is 1 and a bar is 1 when a is 0 so what we need is a equal to 0 b equal to 1 c equal to 0 so 0 1 0 so let us locate that in this uh, table it's here so for this combination x1 would be 1 and for all other combinations x1 would be 0 like that what about x2 we need a equal to 0 b equal to 1 c equal to 1 so 0 1 1 that is here so x2 is 1 for this combination and it's 0 otherwise x3 we need a equal to 1 b equal to 0 c equal to 0 so 1 0 0 that is here and so on x4 we need a equal to 1 b equal to 1 and c equal to 0 so 1 1 0 here so that is 1 and all others 0 all right now we have got x1 x2 x3 x4 and uh, now we can construct the truth table for x and uh, since this is an or operation here x is 1 if any of these is 1 so therefore x will be 1 here 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 and here and otherwise it will be 0 so 4 ones and otherwise all zeros so that is what x looks like let us now look at an alternative form for writing a logical function so let us consider a function y again of three variables a b c and that is what y looks like it is y1 and y2 and y3 and y4 y1 is a plus b plus c a or b or c y2 is a plus b plus c bar and so on now this form is called the product of sums form because this looks like a product although this is an and operation really and each of these looks like a sum because of this or operation here so that's why it is called the product of sums form and uh, we can construct the truth table for y in a systematic manner just like we did for the sum of products form and let us see how we can go about that step number one we enumerate all possible combinations of a b c and uh, this we have seen already more than once step number two we tabulate y1 
which is a plus b plus c and uh, noting that y1 is 0 only if each one of these is 0 that means a is 0, b is 0 and c is 0 and in the same manner we tabulate y2, y3 and y4. And finally, we use the fact that y is and of y1, y2, y3 and y4 and therefore y is 0 if any of these is 0 otherwise y is 1 and that we can use to tabulate y as a function of a, b, c. So let us uh, work this out. Okay, so here is our table and uh, we will not go through this part again of uh, listing all the input combinations. We have seen that before. Let us start with y1 which is a plus b plus c and y1 is 0 only if each of these is 0. So a is 0, b is 0 and c is 0 and that happens over here. So for that entry y1 is 0 otherwise y1 is 1 like that. What about y2? y2 is 0 if a is 0, b is 0 and c bar is 0. So that means c is 1. So we have 0, 0, 1. That is right here. So y2 is 0 for that combination and otherwise it is 1 like that. What about y3? y3 is a bar plus b plus c bar. So what we need is a equal to 1, b equal to 0, c equal to 1. So 1, 0, 1. That is right here. So y3 is 0 there and otherwise it is 1. What about y4? a bar plus b bar plus c bar. So we need a equal to 1, b equal to 1 and c equal to 1. Right here, 0 there and 1 everywhere else. And now we can get our y as a function of a, b, c. y is the and of all of these. So y is 0 if any of these is 0. So that means y would be 0 here, here, here and here. So four zeros and the rest all ones. So that is our overall function y and uh, let us make a comment about this. If we compare this uh, table with the table that we have seen for the function x two slides uh, earlier, you will find that these entries are identical. So that means this y is identical to x which we saw over there. But that x looked like a very different function and that only goes to say that this is an example of how the same function can be written in two seemingly different forms, apparently different forms. In this case x was in the sum of products form and y was in the product of sums form. So they look completely different but they are actually identical functions. So that can happen and we should remember this point. We will uh, consider some definitions now. Let's consider this function x of three variables a, b, c, a, b, c bar plus a bar, b, c plus a bar, b, c bar. Now this form is called the standard sum of products form and each individual term, this one or this one or this one, which consists of all three variables is called a min term. So there are three min terms in this expression. And if we prepare a truth table for x, we will find that the number of ones for x is the same as the number of min terms here. So we will find three ones in the truth table for x. Now x can be rewritten as a b c bar, the first term as it is, plus a bar b and we can combine these two terms because this a bar b is common here and we get a bar b and c plus c bar. c plus c bar is 1, so what we get is a bar b ended with 1 which is just a bar b. So now we have another sum of products form but notice that this term here, the product term does not have all three variables and therefore although this is also a sum of products form, it is not the standard one. In a completely analogous manner, 
we can also talk about the standard product of sums form and let us take this as an example here x equal to a plus b plus c a bar plus b plus c a bar plus b bar plus c and of course uh, let's not forget that there is this and operation here as well as here although we don't explicitly show it sometimes now this form is called the standard product of sums form and each individual term which consists of all three variables notice that there are three variables here here as well as here each individual term is called a max term so this is a max term that is a max term and that is also a max term so there are three max terms in this expression and if we prepare a truth table for x the number of zeros in that table would be the same as the number of max terms so in this case there would be three zeros because we have three max terms now x can be rewritten as follows this is our original expression and uh, we note that there are some things common in this uh, second bracket and the third bracket a bar plus c here a bar plus c here so that is common so let us rewrite this whole expression as this one so we have written that as a bar plus c plus b and a bar plus c plus b bar now we can use the distributive law that we have looked at earlier uh, to be precise the second distributive law that we have seen and rewrite this combine these two brackets then we get a bar plus c plus b and b bar like that and b and b bar of course is zero and then we get a bar plus c here and of course this bracket stays as it is so finally we have a plus b plus c and a bar plus c now this is also a product of sums form this is a sum here this is a sum here and there is a product or the and operation here but this is not the standard form because here we don't have all three variables we have seen so far that a digital variable or a logical variable can take only two values 0 and 1 but there is a third possibility and that is called the don't care condition so let us illustrate what this means with an example let us say I am a businessman very busy of course and I don't have time to think about mundane matters like scheduling appointments and such I would rather spend that time to make more money so I want to design a box which has three inputs a b c and an output s which will help me in scheduling my appointments all right so let us define our uh, variables logical variables a b c and s a stands for I am in town and the time slot being suggested for the appointment is free that means if this whole condition is true then a is 1 otherwise a is 0 b stands for my favorite player is scheduled to play a match which I can watch on TV for example Tendulkar or uh, whoever your favorite player is C stands for the appointment is crucial for my business and S is the output variable it stands for schedule the appointment all right let us now prepare the truth table with uh, these conditions all right so here is the table a b c are the input variables and s is the output uh, variable and let us now try to understand each of these entries a equal to 0 b equal to x c equal to x s is 0 now what is the meaning of a equal to 0 that means this condition is false and that means that the time slot being suggested is not available so the question of uh, my favorite player playing or the appointment being crucial simply does not arise so therefore it does not matter whether b is 0 or 1 or c is 0 or 1 there is simply no scope of scheduling an appointment and therefore s is 0 now these conditions are called don't care conditions so what it means is it does not really matter whether that is 0 or 1 the function is not going to change in either case 
So let us note that we have a new entity called x in the truth table, the don't care condition which we have seen here. Now the next entry a equal to 1, b equal to 0, c equal to x and s equal to 1. Let us see how this works. a is 1 so the time slot is available, b is 0 so my favorite player is not going to play a match on that day. c is don't care which means it does not really matter whether this appointment is crucial for my business or not and either way I am going to go ahead and schedule this appointment so therefore s is equal to 1. Next we have 110 s equal to 0 so the time slot is available my favorite player is playing a match on that day which I would like to watch if I have a choice and it turns out that this appointment is not crucial for my business so therefore I will go ahead and watch the match and not schedule the appointment so therefore s is 0. Next the time slot is available my favorite player is playing a match on that day but now I don't want to watch the match because the appointment is crucial for my business so therefore I will not worry about the match I will worry about my business and therefore I will schedule this appointment so therefore s is 1. To summarize we have seen a new value for logical variables and that is denoted by x it stands for the don't care condition x can be 0 or 1 it does not matter it does not change the value of the function that we are interested in and it's therefore called the don't care condition and uh, don't care conditions can often be used to get a more efficient implementation of a logical function and we will see several examples of uh, how that can be done in summary we have seen how a logical function can be expressed in the sum of products form or the product of sums form we also looked at a third possible value for a logical variable that is the don't care condition denoted by x in the next class we will look at how to minimize a logical function see you next time